Morning everyone, it's Rod, MarineHowTo.com. We're in the in my office today looking at uh, the Victron Orion XS50, which is right here. And I have it set up so that we have a start battery. This is just a small bottom garden battery. And a house bank over here, which is a lithionics lithium iron phosphate battery. And then I have a shunt here, which is connected into here, but I, I don't think I'll need it for this experiment. Uh, and anyway, what I'm talking about today is remote activation versus engine detection mode. Engine detection mode on, on Victron works extremely well on the XS50. In fact, it will find the sweet spot of what your charger is putting out into this, and it won't exceed that, and it won't drain this battery down. But what I want to talk about today is what we call engine uh, non-engine detection mode or remote sense, remote activation. And that little terminal is over here, and it's indicated by an L and an H terminal. And I get more questions about what the heck does L and H mean? All it means is low and high. And low means it's your negative side of the circuit. So I have a black wire connected in that. And once that connects to the negative side of your system, we can see here that uh, the charger will start working. And we can see that it immediately pulls a little bit more than the, the charger is putting out. This is set at five amps right now but it will find that sweet spot and it'll eventually not over, over discharge this battery. All that high side means, H, is that we're activating the uh, XS50 via the ignition switch or a 12 volt switch that provides positive power to the H pin, that's all. Same thing. This is gonna come on and we'll see that it, it hones in and, and it eventually gets to the five amps. So the reason that you do is low side over high side if you're going to use high side, you can use the D plus from your alternator. You could use uh, the engine ignition switch. You could use a manual switch. You could do all kinds of things. For the, the low side, the reason it's got a low side option is because a lot of people don't want their charger to kick on when the engine has just been fired up and oil is not properly circulating yet. So that means you can connect it to the oil pressure system, which completes the ground circuit. And once you do that, I'm going to pull the, the positive uh, high side off, and we'll see that it just it shuts down immediately. So when you shut down the engine, boom, that would shut off. And then uh, I don't want to connect the red to the... <laughs> the uh, so here's your negative side. Boom. It's charging again. So once that oil pressure completes the ground circuit, you would have charging. So that's all that means. So I hope that helps... Uh, alleviate some of the con confusion over the L and H terminal. From the factory, it comes with this little jumper in it. And all this does is complete. So if I if I were to connect these two leads here together, that would just take the place of that jumper. And then we're back in what's called engine detection mode. Hope that helps. Okay, now we're set in uh, engine detection mode. I've turned that on. There's a few things I have to press here because sometimes it turns off the charger when you change those settings. I had to go back and reactivate it. But uh, what I want to show you about engine detection mode is how fast this XS50 works to find the sweet spot and find how much charge current is coming into the start battery. So right now you can see that I have five amps of charge current. That's what this is set at. We're putting out uh, five amps, 4.9 amps into the, the house battery. So it's very efficient. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this up to make it a 20 amp charger, or roughly 20 amps. Now look at how fast the XS50 finds that sweet spot. It knows what the current is coming into this battery because of the voltage. It's watching the voltage and it's going to adjust how much current it's putting into the lithionics battery. By, by the voltage, just watching that and it's matching and making sure we're not over discharging this battery. So these are all settings. I have this programmed to not output any more than 40 amps into that lithium X battery right now, but you can program it anywhere in between. And so in engine detection mode, it doesn't matter what size the charger is on the start battery, it's still gonna find the sweet spot so that you don't over discharge this battery. I still prefer, I still prefer to use the low high option just because I don't want to rely on the software to protect my battery. So when the, the engine is off, 
you're not you're not using the XS50 and it can't run the start battery. That's why that's why I do it that way. But you can do it this way if you trust Victron, which I do. I, I just I just I'm not brave enough to do that because all it takes is for a software glitch. You hit hit a button and you change something, and now you got a dead start battery. Not not a big deal. They're cheap these days. So anyway. I'll make this a five amp charger again. We'll watch how fast it, it finds that five amps. Look at that, five amps, boom. Pretty amazing product. So I hope this helps guys. We got a low high, low is, low is your ground. So you connect it to the ground. Don't connect it to a constant ground though. Always make sure it's like an oil pressure switch because if you connect this if you connect the low side to your ground and it's you know, ground is always ground, your negative is always negative. So if you connect it to the negative side of your system, the thing is always going to be on, period. Whereas if you connect it to the ignition switch or the D plus of your alternator, it's only going to be on when the alternator starts. That said, the software in this works really well to find how much current is being used to charge this battery. It does that by basing it on voltage fluctuations up and down. Pretty magical device. Victron did an amazing job with this product and I can't recommend it highly enough. Everything is fully programmable. Everything takes like two seconds to program. You just hit the little gear button up here. And uh, like, let's say I wanna change the output current. I have it set to 40 amps right here. I prefer to just tap there and go, so let's say 30. Done. There we go, maximum up output is now 30 amps. So if I turn this back up to 60. And we connect our low side, doesn't matter which one I connect. Here we go. Look at that, 30 amps, done. That's how quickly you can program this thing, super easy. I hope this helps. Have a good day, guys.